Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Fret Ground. My name is Aaron Heydrich, and this is the first episode in my new series, Smarter Practice, where I will be distilling concepts from neuroscience down into practical practice techniques that we can use to get the most out of the time we put in to our instrument. This first topic is something I really wish I had learned 10 years ago. It would have saved me hundreds of hours of struggle and heartache. So here's the scenario. You sit down to learn a new skill. Say it's the five pentatonic patterns. You go through each of them, getting them under your fingers, but at some point they start to blend together. You actually notice a moment where you're playing and your finger pauses in midair. It seems to jump between two possible futures. Unable to determine where it's supposed to go, it gets stuck like a deer in the headlights. In this video, I'm going to explain why this happens and how we can avoid having it happen in the future. This phenomenon is caused by something called retrograde interference. When we learn multiple similar skills back to back, the second skill will interfere with the first one, going back in time and messing up practice that we already did. When we first learn a new pattern or a chord shape or skill, the new connections in the brain are very soft and fragile and malleable. The neurons are reaching out toward each other to make these new connections to hardwire the new skill, but they don't know exactly where to go yet. They don't really know how to make the most efficient network possible for this new skill. They're just trying to figure it out. And this moment is a very dangerous moment for the network because it can easily get confused and crosswired. If we learn another skill right away that is so similar that it uses the exact same networks in the brain, then these wires will get crossed and the two skills will sort of morph into one and it becomes very difficult to tease them apart again in the future. This is when you get that moment where your finger freezes and jumps between two possibilities because the two skills have gotten wired together and it can end up taking exponentially more practice to finally get the two patterns actually hardwired correctly and separated. So how do we stop this from happening in the future? When we take a break from what we're doing for at least six hours, or preferably have a sleep period in between, our neurons go through this process called hardening, where the new connections get stabilized, and then we can learn a new skill in the same area without the two getting crossed together. So in practicality, going back to our example of the five pentatonic patterns, we all have the same tendency, which is to try to do everything all at once. We get the charts, it has five patterns on it, and we think, okay, I'm just gonna run through each one of them a few times, and then at the end, I'll connect them all together. And we believe that this will end up with our brain having five separate patterns, that are similar and connected together. But actually, we end up with this giant tangled mess. When I approach a new skill like this now, be it a new set of scales or arpeggios or simply a song that has multiple different parts which are similar but different, I choose one thing to learn at a time. I then run through that thing a lot of times. I really get it under my fingers. And then I try to connect it to as many other things that I already know as possible. Not other new things, other things that I already know. For example, this pentatonic pattern, it goes with this major chord, it goes with this minor chord, it goes with these triads, and this is a little lick I could play with it. All of those things will help the memory to become stabilized because it's connecting them to other things that we already know. Then after doing all of that, I take a break, I play something else or do something else, and then come back to it again later that same day if I have time and review it one more time. 
Then as I'm laying down to sleep, I try to remember to visualize what I worked on so that my brain knows what to prioritize that night during my sleep period. Then when I wake up the next morning, I review that thing that I learned the day before one more time before I figure out what I'm going to work on next. In the beginning, this approach feels slower and it feels more tedious, but I promise you in the long run, it is so much faster at building truly stable, independent memories that don't get confused or crosswired. This is the first video in a long series that I'm going to be doing about the neuroscience of practice and learning. So if you want to see more things like this, hit the like and the subscribe. So the algorithm knows to show you those videos when they come out as always, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.